Welcome back to another video, everyone. So, today we're going over the same skill, our solving equations and uh, our linear equations and linear inequalities, but now we are doing the advanced or the hardest questions that you're going to see on the digital SAT math relating to this specific skill. So, as stated in the other videos, we are going to be isolating a variable and that's the, basically the stated goal here, using our inverse operations and combining like terms in order to achieve that. So before we get started, make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel because we're going to be going over every single skill in the Digital SAT Math Khan Academy course. And let's go ahead and get started. So our inequality here is 8x plus 6 is less than 4x plus 10. So we need to have one variable in order to isolate it. So what I like to do, I like to move over the lesser uh, variable coefficient value. So I would subtract 4x from both sides to start off. And just remember, we need to combine like terms. x terms can only subtract from x terms. So that 4x cannot combine with that 6. It can only combine with the 8x. So we do 8x minus 4x and that is 4x. So we have 4x plus 6 is less than 10. So this first step, now we just need to think we have only one variable now. Now let's get it by itself. Plus 6 is next to our variable, uh, so we always move over the addition and subtraction terms first. So we would subtract 6, do that inverse operation on both sides. 10 minus 6 is 4, so now we have 4x is less than 4. Once again, isolate the variable. We have 4 multiplying with the x. So to get rid of the 4, we need to divide by 4 on each side. And we are just left with x is less than 1. In the last video, we went over a number first compared to variable first inequalities. So I would recommend uh, going to that video if you got an answer. Um, if you maybe like moved stuff around differently and you got an answer such as 1 is greater than x, how we would convert that into x is greater than 1. But, oh, x is less than 1. x is less than 1 is our correct answer here, matches answer choice C. Let's move on to our next question. So we're dealing with, um, we're, we're dealing with fractions here and we need to read the, uh, read the actual directions. For what value of b does the equation have no solutions? So you would have learned about this in algebra, how in order for an equation to have no solutions, constant terms need to be equal. So no solution means that constant terms are equal. So when we move them over, they cancel out both sides. So we just have 0, 0. And then we are left with an incorrect statement, like 2 thirds equals 1 third, which we know doesn't. So that would uh, be no solutions. All solutions or infinite solutions would be everything is the same. So for example, everything is the same would be like three minus five X equals three minus five X. This would be an infinite solution. So we have the exact same thing on each side. And when we would try to move stuff over, everything would cancel out to get zero equals zero. So that's infinite solutions. One solutions, we get a value for X. We've been doing one solutions every other uh, question that we've been doing in the previous videos. And no solutions, here's an example. 2 minus 5x equals 3 minus 5x. So we have the same variable term on each side, but we have deferring constant terms. So if we were to solve this, we add 5x both sides. It cancels out on both sides. Then we are just left with 2 equals 3, and we know that 2 does not equal 3. So that's an example of no solutions. We're going to get an incorrect statement, like 2 equals 3. We know that is not true. And then infinite solutions, we get 0 equals 0. Here we're dealing with no solutions. So it's actually a really simple question. B, we know, just needs to be the same value as the other B on the other side. So B just needs to be equal to negative 5. And then we are left with 2 thirds minus 5x equals negative 5x plus 1 third. We have the same uh, variable term. So if we were to move over that negative 5x, it would cancel out on each side. And we will get no solutions. So C is our answer here. Moving on to this one, very similar to our first question, but instead of an inequality sign, now we have an equation. So negative eight minus eight y equals six minus two y. Same strategy, I like to move over the variables in order to get like a positive term, greater positive term. 
uh, we can see here we have a negative 8y. In order to move this over, uh, to if we combine that with a negative 2y, it would get positive. So that's the value I'm going to move over. I'm going to add 8y to each side. Cancels out with that negative 8y. And then we combine it with our 2y. Remember, those like terms are going to combine. We have negative 2y plus 8y. Negative 2 plus 8 is positive 6. So we are left with 6y, uh, 6 plus 6y equals negative 8. Now we move over this constant term, which is next to our variable. Remember, we move over addition and subtraction before moving over uh, multiplication and division. So we subtract 6 from each side. We are left with negative 8 minus 6. That's negative 14. So we have negative 14 equals 6y. To isolate the y, we need to divide each side by 6. So we divide each side by 6. We have negative 14 over 6. Does that match any of our answer choices? No, but we just need to simplify it. We can, whenever the numerator and the denominator are both even, we can always simplify by 2. So we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2. Negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we are left with y equals negative 7 over 3, which matches answer choice D. All right, last question here. Super easy. We went over this in the first video, actually. They're just trying to uh, fool us on the switching the negative sign. Well, the inequality sign, my bad. So, very important here. I told you guys that they would test this skill in the first video. We have 16 is less than negative 4x. In order to get the x by itself, we need to divide by negative 4. So we divide each side by negative 4. 16 divided by negative 4 is negative 4. And remember, when we divide or multiply by a negative, so, uh, by a negative number, our sign switches. So it goes from a less than to a greater than. And then we have x. But we also need to m get variable first. We have number first right now. So we need to go ahead and switch x to first, switch the sign again to a less than, and then negative 4. So this question involves a lot of switching the signs, which is something that you will definitely see. So I recommend going back to this one um, in review for SAT math, but A is our correct answer choice. And basically, uh, in our first video, we went over substituting in values to check equations. We can also substitute values to check inequalities. What is a value that's less than negative 4? Negative 5 is less than negative 4, so let's substitute in x for negative 5 and see if our inequality is true. So we have 16 less than negative 4 times negative 5. Negative 4 times negative 5 is 20. And is 16 less than 20? It indeed is. So we do get a true statement when we follow this inequality. So uh, that proves answer choice A as being correct. And that will be all for these advanced skills. So, this is our first skill going over, our linear equations and linear inequalities. Um, pretty much doing algebra here. Algebra 1, 7th grade advanced math, you will see those skills contained here. But that will be all for this first skill. In the following days, we'll be going over the foundations moderate and advanced of linear word problems and I hope to see you guys then. Make sure to subscribe and have a fantastic rest of y'all's day. Goodbye!